this is a sales point too. Like you cannot ever, and some of you guys know and gals know in marketing, if you ever taken, like I've not, my education not in marketing. I imagine they teach this stuff in marketing, I don't know. But you can never as a salesperson assume that the person you're seeing across from your client will make decisions the way you make decisions. This is the worst assumption as a salesperson is to think that person makes buying decisions the way you do. Because you, if you put that framework on your client, you will be terrible. You will fail. I guarantee you, you will fail in the sales business. Miserably, you will fail, right? Like, for example, like you're a great example. Yeah, look before you learn. That's right, Stacey. So the other example is you folks that are, are meticulous buyers. Like you check before you make a decision, what decision buying a TV, you will go to consumer reports and you look for those little round circles if it's half colored or fully colored in, right? And you will like do all your research and then you will check every possible store to find the best deal. And you go through this meticulous process that will take you three, four weeks before you make a decision. If you're like that, I guarantee you, unless you're aware of that, you'll fail in sales. You will fail in sales because you know why you'll fail in sales? It's because you will totally sympathize with everyone that tells you they want to think about it. Does that make sense? Well, Alex, I, I want to make sure I make the right decision. All right, you will fail. I promise you, you will fail in life insurance sales. You will fail miserably because you will always sympathize with someone who tells you they want to think about it. Why? Because you would. And unless you're aware of how you buy, you're going to put that on everybody you sell to and you will fail. Your, I guarantee your closing rates will suck. You will be terrible at sales unless you know how to overcome it. How to overcome it is for you to understand that you are like that but you cannot be like that when you're selling a client. Every client has their own buying strategy. Your job is to find it and then overcome it, right? To overcome it. And that's, therein lies, you know, books like this. This book will help you learn to overcome that. But you cannot sympathize with your client on think about it. Does that make sense or am I... Or are you going to fight me? Fight me on it, please. Like, I want to debate you. <laughs> it, it is a psychological thing, man. It's like you have to be totally aware of about yourself before you can, not before, but as you become a better salesperson, the, the self-awareness is everything to become a good salesperson. Because you cannot work your crap out as a salesperson. Like, for another example is if you're looking for a self-affirmation, in sales, quit now. Like quit now because you'll save yourself aggravation. Sales will never be the, the um, profession to be in for, for affirmation. Never look for affirmation from sales. Look for affirmation from God in heaven, from people that you respect, but never look at it from your client. It's okay to feel good when you take care of a client, but that affirmation comes from you knowing that you did what you were supposed to do to help someone out, not from them. That like you feel good when they say, "Oh, I'll, you know, you help me out, whatever." But you, you, because sales is all about rejection. So if you if you're hooked up with such a low self image, if your self image sucks, sales is going to be tough for you. Sales will always be tough for you if your self image sucks. Well, Alex, I do have a low self-image. Then let's get you out of that self-image. Well, how do I do that? Well, number one, know that you're a kid of the king. That's one way to do it. Know that you, you don't believe what Satan's trying to, to tell you. <laughs> that you're a low life, that you're a loser. You know, that's what the enemy wants to tell you. Like, you know, get behind me, Satan, right? It's for you to hang around positive people to do positive affirmations, read positive books to help yourself improve and understand, you know, 
but you can't just do it in a void and a vacuum. To raise your self-image, you got to work, man. Work. Work is the only way to work yourself out of low self-image. You just have to keep working. You can't stop and wait. Alex, I'm going to wait till my self-image is up before I go out there. No, man. You can't do it like that. You got to work and you got to get beat up. And then you come to me and say, man, man, I'll feel bad. It's like, don't feel bad. You're all right. We all went through that. You can get up again. Get up again. Do it tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. Forget the past. Forget the past. Past doesn't count anymore. What counts is now. What counts is now so that you can affect your, affect your future. Because what you have when you wake up every day is you have another day. God gave you another day. For a guy like Chris Long, that Monday morning, that Monday morning, he's saying, I'm taking you home, brother. You're done on this earth. You are done on this earth. You know, so anyway. So again, low self-image can hurt you. Sympathizing with your clients will hurt you. The only thing, not the only thing, that's why you know, gaining confidence through knowledge will help you. Hanging around positive people will help you. Uploading on your upline, your growing upline, that will encourage you and not be negative with you. See, the worst upline you could ever have is someone who's negative that will dump on you and sympathize with you. Yeah, I know these things are terrible, aren't they? Yeah, they suck. What else can I do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm mean, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. I don't know if this is working for me. Yeah, I don't know if it's working for you either. Imagine having that conversation with your upline. Oh man. Now, if I'm trying to think, if I think you're like really not right for the business, I will I will sympathize with you. And I'll suggest maybe this business is not right for you, man. And I did that with somebody. Yeah, just recently, like about two weeks ago. He was giving me a lot of like why he couldn't do stuff. He was just like really selling me on, you know, I just really need someone local. I need this. I need that. And, you know, and I go, you know, I don't know that you're really going to work out with us. Let me make a recommendation. Like, I think you really need to, to find a local agency that you can walk in their doors and you got someone that can like work directly with you and show you stuff, you know, that you know, you're having all these challenges. And the reason why I said that to him is because his mindset was not right. I feel like it was totally wasn't right. I mean, I knew, I knew where I was going to go, basically. I try not to do that, but I try to be positive about people. But based on all the things he's been through and his background and the way he's talking to me, it's like, no, I don't think you're, I don't think you're good for this, man. Um, I think you need to, and he, and he agreed with me. I sold him on it. He said, hey, you know, you're right. I go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. You know, I'm trying to help you out here, right? And so I, I sent him on his way to find something, another company that might be better for him, right? But your mindset, attitude is everything. But you got to work. You cannot become better. You can't increase your self-image. You cannot do any of this stuff without getting on the phone, working, calling those leads, getting beat up, coming back to me to get coaching, then going back out there again. It's the only way that we all got better at this thing. You know, if your kids, you know, sat around playing video games and, and having a pity party on, you know, why they can't find a job, what are you going to tell them, man? Well, have you worked at finding a job? Have you tried to get, improve yourself? Like, what are you doing to improve yourself? Does video game, like I always ask questions, you think video games are helping you improve yourself? If you were a hiring manager and you had all this expertise in video games, what kind of hiring manager would value that experience? That's actually a valid question. Well, probably someone in the video game manufacturing world, right? And, and if you didn't have a resume but a skill, do you think you get hired by them? Well, I don't know. I mean, those are a lot of questions to help your kid explore their ultimate 
prayer what they want to do. But, um, you know, same for you. You're, if you are sitting around wondering how to get better at this, but you're not actively hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, then I, I don't know what we can do to help you out. Like, I'm really fired about getting back together with our sophomore team and our junior team and our freshman team tonight for our coaching call. Because the freshmen, their homework assignment for the freshmen was to practice. I paired them up to practice their, their dials. So they can give each other um, objections and they can answer the objections, right? And I've got about 10 people on that. There's some people missing, so I don't think they actually did the homework. But I think we have like maybe 10 people that are doing the homework. And I'm really excited to find out what occurred tonight. Um, what is it, nine o'clock tonight for the freshman coaching meeting? I'm fired up because we are moving them through the process of the first homework. So I was learning CFG and Great Western. The second one was practicing phone script. What do you think our next homework assignment is going to be? You can probably guess, but I'm not going to tell you until tonight, right? Within 30 days, I'm going to have these people write in an app a week or more. They're going to be like rocking because I'm putting them through a process of accountability. I'm teaming them up so that there's accountability to someone other than me, right? They're trying to encourage and help each other, We're creating a really cool freshman coaching team that they're all going to progress through this together. I don't know if anyone's going to drop out, maybe, probably, I don't know. But at the end of 30 days, man, these people are going to be rocking. I'm, I'm so excited about it. They're going to graduate to sophomores. And so our sophomores are going to be meeting at 830. We're only going to have a half hour because I gave them each kind of where they're at, depending on where they're at, very specific things to do, like get their schedule together. And then for the estate planning people to put, put together a list of their current clients that they're going to go after. OK, and, you know, um, and then for the other salespeople, you know, we're going to get them on a regular basis, calling leads and getting and following their schedule and creating an accountability group there. So I'm fired up about that. But the reason why I'm fired up about that is I'm giving them something to do that they got to get done by the next time we meet. And see, action cures fear. Action cures self-image, right? And um, fellowship and accountability with other people will help you will help encourage you to continue to move forward. Does that make sense, Kang? I am so jacked up about these coaching teams. And then I'm probably going to start a, a simultaneous freshman team because I've got some people that go through boot camp right now and um, put them in, you know, kind of get enough of them to put them in the same track and then follow a syllabus that I'm actually putting together right now as far as, you know, moving people forward. So, so I'm jacked up about that. Any, so any other questions?